Hey guys, Kaylee here and welcome back to The Honeystead. If you guys are new to my channel, I wanna take the time and welcome you. I wanna welcome you to what we have going on. It's a little bit of a hodgepodge. We do gardening, we do beekeeping, we do swarm catching, we do woodworking, we do homesteading. And we take you guys with us along the way. It started out as a hobby, but I've actually really enjoyed sharing our story with you guys along the way. I've had a tremendous growth of new subscribers lately and I want to just take the time and welcome you all, welcome all the new, thank the old that's been here, not old, thank the OGs that have been here throughout this entire time cheering me on and supporting me and my family as we document all of it <laughs> and share it with you guys here on YouTube. I was able to take some time today and get up in my garden and I wanted to share with you guys just a little bit about the beekeeper's garden and walk you through and show you what we have growing here on the Honeystead. Check out all of this hyssop. It is all going to bloom and all the pollinators appear to be very, very happy. This right here is stevia. We are letting it go to bloom as well. And then my sage is drawing in some big old fluffy bumblebees. I don't really mind when a lot of my plants bolt and start to bloom and go to seed. It, it's, just, it's just more for the bees. Now, my onions have, majority of them have already bolted and they are blooming. And I can tell you what, our bees are very much enjoying it. So it's hit or miss. I have a good amount that I'm getting ready to harvest. I've had a few people ask me what to do if their onions go to go to seed and bolt. The only advice that I can give you is don't plan on storing those onions. You wanna eat them right away. But our bees are just very, very much enjoying them. And they look so magical here in the garden. I wanna show you guys something that we've been pretty eager to grow this year. Our good friends over at Haas Tools sent us some stunning zinnia seeds. So we planted a whole row of zinnias. I have been battling a little bit of the Japanese beetles, but if I come out here pretty often, I can just pick them off and they don't do any damage. But we are getting ready to get our first little bloom it's absolutely adorable. I can't wait to see all the colors. So a couple months ago, I planted Galanga, which is the Thai ginger. And I am very excited that it is all starting. We planted a new batch of radishes, but they're coming up. Tell you what, if I could survive off of mint alone, I think I would be perfectly fine. It will spread, so keep an eye on that. That's my biggest issue that I'm having right now is my mint is trying to take over my little herb garden right here. Some lavender is starting to really grow. The bees absolutely love lavender and so do we. Mm. It might have been a little bit too late for some of our cauliflower, but I can't help it because this is what happens. It goes to seed and at this point, it's more valuable to the bees than it is for me. I might be able to salvage some seeds off of it and save them for next season. This is what's left of our peas. They are starting starting to not fare so well in this heat. We went through and picked a whole bunch of them. I'm gonna pull them out of the pods and we're gonna cook them up for dinner tonight. But I think that our peas are pretty much ready to go and we're gonna pull them up and I'm gonna think of something else that we can plant that is, that's fun around our trellis. The Haas Tool baby lettuce mix is still growing strong. I've come out here almost every single day and picked enough 
for dinner and for lunch. And I tell you what, it is still growing. I'm having to give it away, but this style of growing is called the cut and come again. It's been really well for us. I was really excited when I came out here the other day and I noticed that our Thai long beans are already starting to trellis up and over. They're extremely good climbers. I can't wait to harvest some Thai long beans. This kale is still growing strong. I'm gonna have to do a big harvest really soon. I was able to dehydrate some of the kale chips and it was really good. My plan is I'm gonna harvest a whole bunch of it and I'm gonna go ahead and dehydrate it and get it ready and store it. When I make soups this winter, I'll have some, I'll have some kale that we can add in. The dinosaur kale is going strong as well. So I did not plant this tomato plant. This came back from last year. I'm kind of eager to see what it is, but we're gonna help secure it really soon on this cattle panel as well. But look, it's happening, finally. I've been out in our garden since probably eight nine o'clock this morning. I was able to get into the bees and check on them. I didn't bring my big camera with me, but I did get some pretty cool footage on why it's important to always check the inner lid when you're doing a hive inspection. So this, my friends, is why it is always good to check your inner cover before you go and place it on the ground. I knew this colony was really fast growing and sure enough, I had a feeling the queen was going to be on it. So we are going to be adding, cleaning this off and making sure that the queen gets back in that colony where she belongs. Look at her though. She's quite beautiful. Yeah, I know. You're running out of space, girly. We'll get you hooked up. Don't you worry. So I've been keeping, I've been keeping this a little secret for a while, <laughs> but I did something a little different this year. I planted a whole bunch of sunflowers behind my, behind my bees. And I'm actually, I'm really excited to see them all start popping up. Our good friends from Hostels sent us over such an abundance of sunflower seeds. So we're really excited to see them all start popping open. But, and then today, what I thought was really fun, when I was doing my hive inspection, I noticed that we had a poppy actually growing. bunch of asparagus go to seed this year. It's always nice when you let it go to seed because it ends up coming back each year just a little bit more and more. So this whole little patch is all asparagus. I'm definitely looking forward to being able to harvest some of this, some of our squash for sure. But look, you can see it's starting soon enough. We planted a pretty large patch of it. And then this year, look at it. It's a baby. <laughs> so all of these are all cucumbers, but look, it's starting soon enough. We're growing a few different types of cucumbers this go around. Uh, one is the cucumelon, pretty, pretty excited to see how that goes. Um, and then two other pickling cucumber varieties. That is kind of my goal. I really want to just grow enough that we can enjoy and then also grow enough that we can store. This is a cinnamon basil. It's our first time growing it and I can already tell you that it is just delicious absolutely delicious. It smells exactly like cinnamon, but with the basil. It's a perfect combination of a cinnamon and basil smell. 
some of our purple basil as well. And then we have a Thai holy basil. Growing basil is probably one of my favorite herbs to grow here on our farm. It just smells so, so delicious. It smells so good and the bees just absolutely love it. I've had a few people ask me about this quick little bee hat thing. And this came from Amazon. Nothing crazy special, but it does the trick. There is one that I am dying to get, but it's from my good friend over at Being Mandy. She makes these custom bee veils and they're completely adorable. I'm saving up for one. I'll make sure to put her link down below so you guys can check them out, but they are so stinking cute. those days. I have a lot of people that ask me about, you know, my bees being up in my garden and if it can be a burden. And sometimes I would say yes. On the other hand, for me to know that my bees are in a safe fenced in area, it's worth it. It's worth it for me to put a veil on. And what I found, what's nice about wearing a veil, whether you're a beekeeper or not, the gnats don't bother you at all and it's shade. So for me, this is, this is kind of, this has kind of become my go-to fashion for when I have to work up in my garden or outside in general. I'm hoping that we'll be able to get harvest these peaches before before the darn squirrel do. Had a really big one that was almost ready and I came out to go get it and it was gone. It's a constant struggle. This is all patty squash. I'm anticipating blossoms pretty soon. It's definitely been a hot day, but I was able to get a lot done. Take you guys with me and let you kind of see what we have going on with the garden. And I think I am done for the day. The garden looks beautiful and the bees seem to be pretty happy. So thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old.